So for a while now, I've been, or for the last month, I've been posting a lot of reels on Instagram, and some people have been asking me about how I do them, how I animate the camera, any kind of advice or tips and tricks. So this little video is kind of about that, is a general breakdown of how I do my camera animations in 3D Studio Max, and of how I accomplish my camera moves. So for those that don't know, here's a little breakdown, or here's a little video showcasing some of those reels that I've been doing. and. All it is is the camera coming in fast, then it's kind of slow, and then it's fast again to use motion blur as a transition element. So they're, they're hard cuts, but motion blur helps with that effect of the frames going from one to another. So to showcase that, what I'm trying to recreate in the 3D side of things is a gimbal setup. I have one of these gimbals in real life and the way it works is there's several axes that things rotate around. There's this one, this one, and this one. This one right here controls the camera tilting forward and uh, forward and upward, downward type of deal. So if you were to look down at the ground, it uses you to this one. If you look up at the sky, it uses that one. The next one is this one back here. And this controls your camera tilt that goes clockwise and counterclockwise. So if you want to move forward and then kind of 360 spin into the object, that's the, uh, the node that it uses. And then the last pivot point is right here in the middle. And then this is kind of like, let's say you're walking and you want to rotate the whole unit upside down. That's kind of what this is. So if you were to press this button, this rotates the whole camera kind of 360 and it could look you in the face. So now with all that said is we are going to try to recreate this in 3D and this is just my workflow and my method of doing it. Everyone has their own method, everyone has their own workflow so this is neither right or wrong, it's just what works for me and what has been and I'm still learning, I'm still kind of progressing as I go. So I'm just kind of sharing the knowledge that I have available to me thus far. So the first thing I want to do is create, let's say, the whole arm, the whole mechanism. And that's where you kind of hold it and move it. That's the first thing I want to do. To do this, I create a circle shape. So I'm just going to go to top view, create a circle shape, and make the color lime green. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is create a camera. And I'm just going to go to top view again, just drag and drop anywhere. I am aligning the camera to the center of the circle. Shortcut for that is Shift A. I'm selecting the target, Shift A, and now I'm just dragging the target forward so that way the camera is looking perfectly straight. I'm going to go to Select Camera and uncheck Target. Now the next thing that you want to make sure, and I've already set up the file, this is why the settings are already set up, is I am United States, my frame rate for my videos is 24 frames per second, so my shutter speed, just like in the, uh, the real world, you want to double your frame rate, so my shutter speed is 1 50th of a second, and then uh, the aperture is 1.8. I usually for my reels like to be between 1.8 so that way the background is really gooey and it's just it makes it a very fun looking visual. And then I also check motion blur and depth of field. I use these the way it would naturally work. If it looks great, great. If it doesn't, it's real and I accept the flaws as they are. So the next thing is to create some of these uh, rotation objects. So we're going to go to point and we're going to create a point, align it to the camera. And the first point, just like that. Now I'm going to duplicate the point, make it a copy, uncheck cross, and make it larger. Now, this is what we have, and I'm going to explain what we just did. The first point that we have, this little one, this is this motor. This is so we could tilt the camera forward and downward. So, what we're going to do is take this camera and link it to this point. And now what we're going to do is take this point, link into this one, and this one, link into that one. Now, I have misspoke, and the reason why I say that is I have, even though that's how it is in real life, I've uh, changed it up based on my personal workflow and what I like. So I actually use the center point for the forward and downward tilt, and I use this third point as my counterclockwise and clockwise motion, which is this thing in real life right here. So that way I could tilt the camera just like that at the end and I will show you right now how I do this and what makes it work for me so let's say we are doing an animation for Instagram reel or whatever 
and we want to come in aggressively to the uh, the wheel. This is ADV1 wheels, and let's say we want to promote the wheel brand. So first things first is I like to see the motion path so I can see visually how things are moving. So you select your shape, right click, and just click show motion paths. So I'm going to do auto key. I'm going to create a key at frame zero. I'm going to go to keyframe five and just come in really hot into the wheel. Just very aggressive. And you can see this stepping, these little dots. Because of how big the gap is, this means it's moving really quickly. Um, I can't really explain in terms of mathematics or logic. This is just when you do it enough, you get to have a good feel of how the, the separation affects the time, if you will. So that's the first thing is I move my circle, my big outer circle in as if that was holding the camera. I moved it in and I rotated it a little bit uh, counterclockwise to have focus at the wheel. So here we are, we come in. So now this motion, if I was to press play, it feels a little quick. While it would be very aggressive motion blur, I feel like it's a little quick. So I'm just gonna select this last keyframe, just drag it out a couple frames. And keep in mind, we do want this to be a fairly quick motion because this is the introduction, not the actual motion motion. So we come in this way. And then what we're gonna do is skip about 24 frames from this frame and just kind of keep coming in but slowly and as you can see as we do this see how the dots are a lot closer than these this is just a little reference of timing and how how the pacing is for the motion so now I'm gonna press play there we go come in get in real close and then we're gonna go to like frame 30 and really just smack right into the uh, the branding just like this there we go, and we're going to lift it up some, just like that. All right, so that is our first move for the animation, let's say. All right, I don't mind that. So the next thing we want to do is think about this in real life. So in real life, if you were to do this kind of motion, you would do it at one constant speed. You would not be doing what we're doing here, coming in fast and slow and then fast. You would not only hit something with your camera but it would be really hard to get a good sense of pacing this way and your camera will be shaking all over the place the stabilizer won't even work that well so what you want to do is in real life have one smooth walk one smooth motion and then you type remap it in post now in 3d while you could do one motion and then time remap in post but from my perspective is these are render times that i'm trying to avoid so if I could just do that time remap kind of deal in 3D naturally, I'm going to go for it. So this is why I'm bringing that point up. In real life, you won't really go in a perfect linear shape like this. Everything's going to have kind of like a little tilt to it. Now, I'm not going to get too fixed on having every line have a perfect motion, but things like this, for example, there's absolutely no way you could have a perfect perfectly even height for the whole move unless you have this attached to like a, uh, a car or any kind of rig that doesn't allow the camera to move higher or lower. You're going to do this by hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up some, go to my next keyframe, and I have this little guy checked, and this allows me to toggle from keyframe to keyframe only. Now I'm just going to come up a little higher. And this is where seeing the motion path really helps because I could see exactly how these uh, how these things are looking. All right, so as you can see, now we have a constant move and elevation change that feels a little more natural. So the next thing we're gonna do is animate our actual downward tilt. Now before I do that, I'm gonna double click on this circle and this selects our whole rig. And I'm gonna go to every keyframe and hit the set keys button. That way we've we lock in keys for every animation point so that way I could just go from point to point and the motion is always consistent in terms of uh, uh, the best way I could phrase it is if you add a motion on this stop but your next key, move on the other rig is going to be over here you're going to have a very weird feeling like you're going to notice like a punch and we don't want that we want everything to have a nice flow to it so that's why we're just it's important to animate on the keyframes so I'm going to change this from view to local and now I am going to be looking down. So think of this as looking at the pavement and as we're coming to the car, we're tilting upward. 
So we're looking at the pavement, then we come up, and then we show a little bit of the rim. We get closer, we show more rim, and then we smack into the emblem. So this is how it feels. Come in, just like that, and we could actually even look up a little higher, just like this. There we go. So, boom. And with motion, but that's going to look really cool. All right. So that's the first one. And I'm happy with that. And I'm going to animate this third helper. Now, I don't always do it. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. This is all about preference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little camera tilt. So as if I was coming in from the left of the car to the driver's side. And then it's going to have like a little like airplane type of move to it. So what I mean by that is I'm going to add a little tilt like this. And then it's going to come in like so. I'm going to tilt it like that. So that way the motion has a little tilt happening. Then when we go to this keyframe, I'm going to have it like this. So that way, as the airplane's coming in, it's going to keep turning the opposite direction. And then when we come into the branding, I'm going to go really aggressive with that tilt. So just like this. And maybe turn it down. Not so much. So there we go, just like that. All right, so I like how that feels. And now what you can do too is animate it to look down like so. And this is where some of this final touch-up motion could be added so you could really get what you want to focus on, just like that. All right, now that I have that, the last thing to do is animate my focal point. Now, I like to use real depth of field. I like to try to use real motion blur, real depth of field, so it's as natural as possible. So to do that, I am going to animate my target distance. Now, here's the trick. We're not using a target, but target distance still works. So I'm gonna go to this keyframe, and I'm gonna move this slider down. And for those that don't know, the way uh, depth of field in 3D Max works, the way it visually works in terms of these helpers, this blue box is your focal point, and these two is kind of like your forgiveness zone. So anything in here is going to have focus, everything outside is going to get gooey. So we're just going to go to the ADV1 logo, have that in focus, make sure this is kind of right around the tire area, there we go, so that way when we scrub through it as you can see the focal point is going to remain on the wheel on the wheel keep going in all right frame 24 same thing we're going to remain on the adv1 and then frame 30 so let's see we're at two feet eight inches and then we'll just go to two feet because in real life um when you're using your focus with a real lens at some point you can't focus on subjects too close to the lens so even if we do 1.5 feet, that's semi-realistic, but so at some point it just won't focus, it's just going to remain blurry, and so this is going to happen. So there we go, that's feeling good, all right, that's feeling solid, so there we go. So there's that. Now the last thing I want to mention is, okay, I'm using real motion blur, but what's going to happen is frame zero could possibly not have motion blur. The reason why I say this, frame zero is actually a static frame. There's no motion happening between negative one and one. So zero is stationary. Frame one is going to have motion blur because from frame zero to frame two, we actually have a movement. So the trick to adding motion blur on these frames where we're more or less done with the animation, select our whole rig, go to curve editor, click on this button, change it to linear. And what this does, it keeps the animation 100% the same of what we have from here to here and from here to here. And what I mean by that is if you go to frame 30, as you can see, this is done. We did not animate anything else, but our actual motion continues the same. It's making it 100% constant of what this last keyframe sequence tells it to do. And the same thing happens in the opposite direction. So now our frame zero will have motion blur as well as our whole animation. So that in a nutshell is my method of animating a camera and creating the camera rigs for all my reels. I use this 
on pretty much every job that I do, whether it's these personal Instagram reels or my professional uh, work work. The only thing I also might do is I might have a third helper and that third helper is my bump controller. And what I mean by that is it has real camera shake link to it. So that way when I'm animating the car flying around racetrack and my camera has to wobble and shake, that camera is linked to the wobble and then the rest is linked as is so that way I can still control the rotation and such and I get a very natural feel of vibration of the car.